Reporting here for Freedom Net Daily, I want to give a brief report on Tripoli and uh, just to try to bring us in a little bit to where it looks to be uh, all formulating where it's going and what the mainstream media isn't presenting to us. Uh, I did some research on this so that I could bring this to you. And I put these few pieces together. There's some videos, some articles, because I think putting it all together in this one video maybe can help us to get a little bit better handle on it. Now I got some clips from Webster Tarpley, uh, BBC, uh, some other things, uh, Infowars articles, Tony Carter Lucci, that's the one that really set me into it to uh, get a better understanding of uh, what's going on here. So I think, uh, uh, and now where where it's turning to is even more important. So, hey, stand by, take a look at it. I think uh, it could be of a benefit to you. It, it was to me just reviewing these few things here that I'm presenting to you. So hope you stay with us. What happened here at the Abu Salim hospital over the past four days is one of the most terrible incidents of this entire revolution. Doctors have come in from across Tripoli to help out. We were told that, like the doctors, we'd have to wear surgical masks inside for our own safety. The hospital staff here all ran away days ago because of the fighting but seriously injured people kept on being brought in, dozens of them, perhaps as many as a hundred altogether. And here they died of their injuries, entirely untreated. The stench of death is overpowering, far too strong for the feeble efforts of this volunteer with his air freshener. The floor is thick with blood, the scenes which took place here defy the imagination. In one ward, Colonel Gaddafi's picture smiles down genially over the horror. We simply can't show you the pictures in this room because they're too horrible. I've got to wear three of these surgical masks and even so the stench is absolutely nauseating. When you walk along the corridor You've got to be really careful because there's blood everywhere and you could slip over so easily. The doctors are deeply shocked by what they've seen. I was in the mosque, I prayed Juma, Juma prayed. Then uh, the, the Imam told that they need some help in a Muslim hospital. I thought that they need the medical help. Okay, I volunteered to, to give some medical help to my people, but. When I entered inside, there is nobody inside. They want help to clean the hospital, to bring life back to this hospital. And this is the catastrophe. Never ever seen like this. More and more of these things are starting to come to light now. This is the suburb of Gargur, silent and largely deserted. We came here with a group of rebels who were taking over the area. Some Gaddafi loyalists have been living here and the green flags of the old regime were still flying, though the inhabitants were probably gone. But they'd left their mark. They'd shot down eight ordinary people who'd come back to see if their homes were still safe. Death and more death, and new cases are being discovered all the time. John Simpson, BBC News, Tripoli.
Dead bodies lie under the heat of the Tripoli sun in Muammar Gaddafi's compound. Up to 30 men believed to be loyal to Gaddafi were killed here during heavy fighting on Wednesday. At least two are bound with plastic handcuffs, indicating an execution. Seven bodies were also found piled into a wasteland nearby, their hands tied. Libyan rebels have previously accused Gaddafi of using mercenaries from African nations to hunt them down. Meanwhile, video posted onto a social media website, which cannot be independently verified by Reuters, purports to show footage of Gaddafi's ransacked home. More footage allegedly shows the interior of his daughter Aisha's home, in particular this sumptuous bathroom, complete with jacuzzi and flat-screen TV. The Libyan leader is now believed to be in hiding. Sunita Rapai, Reuters. Echoes, do you think, Hello. of the past here, Webster? The U.S. has tried this before, hasn't it? Supplying weapons to rebels in Afghanistan back in the 80s. Uh, that didn't turn out so well. Those weapons, indeed, that expertise being used against them now. Do you think we could see a repeat in Libya? I'm, I'm very much afraid that it is. Uh, we have a study from West Point, the United States Military Academy, dated December 2007, which would indicate that the band of territory from Benghazi over to Tobruk, going through the city of Derna or Darna, this is an area with one of the highest densities of uh, Islamic terrorism anywhere in the world. If you're looking for jihadis, if you're looking for mujahideen, this seems to be the world capital, especially according to the U.S. government definition of terrorism. What happened was the U.S. forces back in uh, 2007 captured the Al-Qaeda personnel files in the, an area in Iraq near the Syrian border. And what they found was, in terms of terrorists per capita, Libya was by far the most active center for the recruitment of jihadis to go into Iraq and kill the U.S. and the NATO forces. Uh, Saudi Arabia sent more uh, individual fighters, but in terms of population, Libya was the champion, but not all of Libya, especially this area of Benghazi and above all the city of Darna. Darna is a town of about 50 or 70,000 people, and they were the absolute world champion, number one in the world, in terms of sending terrorists into Iraq. Uh, and they were doing this, uh, they beat uh, Riyadh, the capital of Saudi Arabia, even though Riyadh is a city of four or five million people, and Darna is, is much smaller, again, 50 to 60,000 people by some estimates. It's so intense that you, in the city of Darna, you've got about 1,000 population, so that, that's enough to send one terrorist fighter. So one terrorist per thousand or 1,500 population at the most. And this is not simply a study that indicates the sociological tendency towards Al-Qaeda terrorism, because that's who this was. We have it now confirmed. If you look at the London Daily Telegraph this past Saturday, based on a report in Il Sole 24 Ore, the main business newspaper in Italy, they sent their correspondent to Darna, and interviewed the commandant of the city, the rebel commander. And he's a guy called Hasidi, and he says, yes, I sent 25 fighters to go and kill the U.S. and, and NATO forces in Afghanistan. And he says he was there himself. He was captured near Peshawar. He may well have been an inmate of the Guantanamo Bay concentration camp. That part's not clear. But he is a former U.S. POW, captured as a terrorist, and he is now commanding this amazing city of Darna, where you've got one one terrorist fighter for every thousand or fifteen hundred of population and this is the group that the US regime with Obama and Hillary Clinton and Cameron in Britain are proposing to arm. They want to give them modern weapons, they want to give them a share of the 32 billion of Libyan assets that have been confiscated here and they want them to have a share in the oil revenue. This is an absolute recipe for disaster. It's an exercise in insanity and as you say it shows they've learned absolutely nothing from the, from the sad story of Afghanistan. Alright Webster taking absolutely everything you say there. What are your thoughts? 
so if so if Al Qaeda is enemies with Gaddafi, does that make in this situation Al Qaeda our friends? Absolutely not. Suppose you get these crazies, because that's the only way to put it: psychotics, fanatics, misfits, terrorists, whatever they are. You're going to give them modern arms. You're going to give them a slice of those thirty-two billion dollars. You're going to give them the oil revenue. They'll create a terrorist power that uh, will will go wild across the world. Governments around the world need to ask the United States, "What are you doing, arming and promoting Al Qaeda fighters in those areas of uh, of Libya?" The other angle on this is the tribal ba- makeup. In other words, it's primarily the Harabi and the Obeidat tribes that go with Al Qaeda. That's the Libyan. Uh, Benghazi rebel council. Those people are racists. They hate black people. Uh, and you've noticed uh, the, there have been atrocities by the rebels against black Africans and against black Libyans. If you were from Mali or from Chad and you were in Benghazi, Darna, Tobruk, you had a very good chance of being slaughtered, literally lynched in many cases. Of the Gaddafi tribes, the pro-Gaddafi tribes being the Qaddafa, the Magahira the Wafala and the Fezan. The Fezan are black or very dark. They might be massacred if that rebel army gets into Western Libya. We're going to have a genocide of black people presided over by Obama and Susan Rice. So you're Somewhat saying uh, to to one extent, uh, there's a chance that the rebels, the rebels that are getting armed right now uh, with the help of uh, U.S. allies, you're saying that there's a chance that as this goes down the road, that they could start hanging people from the sides of the road just as They've Gaddafi did. They've already done it. The, the, the reporting was all slanted against Gaddafi, but the, the black Africans were lynched by the rebels when they took over in, in those areas. So uh, it's supposedly an intervention to protect civilians, and it's preparing a, uh, a genocide similar to the Bay of Pigs. Right? Remember that the CIA sent a secret army into Cuba in 1961, and they failed, just as these Libyans have failed. Alan Dulles went to Kennedy and said, give me airstrikes and give me ground forces. Kennedy said, no, I won't, and you're fired. Obama, in the same situation, has said, send in the forces. Okay, welcome back. Uh, I want to just take and look at a couple articles that are uh, just out. Now, as Webster Tarpley had reported, he reported this back in the end of March. It was like March 30, uh, where those videos you saw were from and now we see the very things that he was talking about uh, all we've seen mainstream media is these contrived uh, hoaxes of victory in Tripoli and all the staged uh, media coverage now the real thing is beginning to show up we can see here a uh, Washington Post article the Libyan rebels uh, killing black Gaddafi supporters, and it, let me just read this little piece out of it. Uh, the worst treatment of Gaddafi loyalists appeared to be reserved for anyone with black skin, whether they hailed from southern Libya or from other African countries. Darker skinned prisoners were not getting the same level of medical care in a hospital in rebel head held Zawahi, Zawahia as lighter-skinned Arab Libyans, Althaway said. Okay, so this is verifying the very same thing that uh, um, the uh, Webster Tarpley would just saying would take place. Now, a couple more pictures from the, uh, let's see if I can get my uh, thing out of your way here, but uh, conflict and chaos in Libya. A man looks at the dead bodies in the hospital and the rest of Abu Salim neighborhood of Tripoli. Okay, same places we just showed you in the uh, articles uh, that were uh, put out as well as the video, uh, the hospitals being vacated and the dead bodies being brought in and left and they were just left there to die. And uh, apparently the victims of fighting that prevented the wounded from being treated Okay, so more reporting on that. Uh, also, here from uh, Gaddafi's compound, Muammar Gaddafi. Uh, bodies lie outside the south here. Let me bring this up. Uh, the picture might be in the way. Uh, bodies lie outside the south gate of Gaddafi's Bab al Azizia compound in Tripoli. I butchered the name. But you get the idea. Same places, same events. 
uh, same results, uh, same predictions that were put out to you by Webster Tarpley and many others. And now we're seeing it. And this is just the early stages. This is the beginning stages. We've seen uh, RT reporter from the hotel being uh, uh, in, in total fear of his life. Uh, 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 I'm going to do a little research, see if there's any latest on, on his whereabouts and his safety. Uh, but it, he was in serious fear of his life. I hope and pray uh, his mother was on, uh, on a uh, particular YouTube as well, uh, pleading for her uh, son's release. And, and there was a number of them that did get released, and uh, hopefully he was in one of them. And, uh, hey, thanks for uh, joining us here at uh, Freedom Net Daily. I hope it helps you get you involved to do the research on this, see what's really going on. This is not going to stop here. They're after Syria and uh, Egypt's still in ter turmoil and uh, it's going to continue on from here. Uh, I still see uh, the uh, continuing rollout of the uh, predictions that uh, uh, the Reverend there made, uh, Lindsey Williams, concerning the double crossing of all these nations. So uh, it's not over. The Saudi Arabia is still on the uh, uh, on the radar. The whole thing. Hope you help me research this. Get out your YouTube's and information. Thanks for for watching.